Imagine a land, ancient and sacred, where every stone tells a story, every shadow whispers secrets of the past. A land that has seen empires rise and fall, yet remains at the center of the world's attention. Today, this land, Israel, is once again embroiled in conflict. But what if this is more than just another chapter in history? What if this is part of a divine plan, unfolding right before our eyes? Could it be that the current war against Israel is not just a geopolitical struggle, but a significant marker on God's prophetic timeline? A timeline that has been ticking away for millennia, leading us ever closer to the most pivotal events in human history. As the world watches, Israel stands not merely as a nation under siege, but as the central player in a cosmic drama, a drama that includes the Great Tribulation and the long-awaited return of Jesus Christ. But what does this mean for us? Are we mere spectators, or are we being called to pay attention to the signs, to read the script that has been written in the stars and in the pages of ancient prophecies? Stay with me as we delve deeper into the significance of Israel's role in these last days. What if the events we're witnessing are not just random occurrences, but are, in fact, aligning with prophecies that are thousands of years old? And if so, what comes next? In the beginning, there was a promise, an extraordinary promise made by God to a man named Abraham. A promise that would echo through the corridors of time, shaping the destiny of nations and the course of history itself. This promise wasn't just a fleeting word, it was a covenant, unbreakable and divine. God promised Abraham a land, a homeland for his descendants, a place that would be theirs forever. But this promise was not merely about a piece of earth, it was about something far greater, something that transcends the physical. Israel, the nation born from this promise, is not just a country. It is the manifestation of a sovereign act of God, a physical embodiment of his eternal plan. But why Israel? Why did God choose this small, seemingly insignificant land to be the focal point of his covenant? The answer lies in the dual nature of this promise. It had earthly implications, Israel as a nation, a people set apart. But it also had profound spiritual significance, one that extends far beyond the borders of Israel. For while the descendants of Abraham would inherit the land, the spiritual descendants, those who are part of the body of Christ, would inherit something far greater. They would become part of a divine lineage, a spiritual Israel, connected not by blood, but by faith. So, what does this mean for us today? Is the existence of Israel just a historical accident, or is it a living testament to a promise made thousands of years ago? Could it be that Israel's very presence on the world stage is a reminder of God's faithfulness, a sign that his promises are still unfolding? What if this ancient promise is not yet fully realized? And how do we, whether near or far, fit into this divine narrative? Imagine standing on the shore, watching the waves crash against the sand, each grain slipping through your fingers. Now, look up at the night sky, where countless stars twinkle in the vast expanse. It's almost impossible to comprehend their number, yet both the sand and the stars serve as symbols of something far greater, a promise made by God to Abraham. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the grains of sand on the shore, an uncountable multitude that would inherit the land and conquer the cities of their enemies. But this promise wasn't just about physical descendants, it was layered with a deeper, spiritual meaning. The earthly descendants, like the grains of sand, would form the nation of Israel, a people chosen by God, enduring through time, standing against the odds, and prevailing over their enemies. These are the people who would walk the land promised to Abraham, their feet touching the very soil that God vowed would be theirs forever. But the promise didn't stop there. God looked beyond the earthly and pointed to the heavens, where Abraham's spiritual descendants would shine like the stars. These are the believers, those who would come to know God not by birthright, but by faith. Christians, scattered across the globe, are the stars in this promise, connected to Abraham by a bond stronger than blood, a bond of belief. So, as we contemplate this promise, we must ask ourselves, how do we see ourselves in this grand narrative? Are we part of the sand, walking in the legacy of Israel? 
Or are we among the stars, shining with the light of faith, spread across the heavens? What does it mean to be a descendant of Abraham today, in a world so different from his, yet still bound by the same ancient promise? And perhaps most importantly, how does this promise continue to unfold in our lives and in the world around us? The promise made to Abraham did not fade with time, instead, it was passed down through generations, gaining strength and significance with each step. God, in his unwavering faithfulness, reaffirmed this covenant with Abraham's son, Isaac, and later with Isaac's son, Jacob. These were not mere words spoken into the wind, they were divine assurances that the land promised would belong to their descendants forever. Imagine the weight of these words, a land that would be theirs for eternity. To Isaac, God reiterated the promise, not as something new, but as a continuation of what had been established with Abraham. The same land, the same divine commitment, passed down like a sacred inheritance. Isaac was to carry this promise, knowing that it was not only his, but also for the generations that would come after him. And then came Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, who would wrestle with God and emerge with a new name, Israel, a name that would define not just a man, but an entire nation. To Jacob, God confirmed that the promise was alive and unbroken. The land was his and his descendants, a perpetual inheritance that would endure through all time, despite the challenges and adversities that lay ahead. But why did God repeat this promise? Was it simply to remind them, or was there something deeper at play? Each reaffirmation wasn't just a repetition, it was a strengthening of the covenant, a divine reminder that God's promises are unshakable, no matter how many generations pass. As we reflect on this, we might wonder, how do we see the unfolding of this promise today? Is the land still a testament to God's enduring covenant, a symbol of his faithfulness? And how do we, in our modern world, connect with the legacy of Isaac and Jacob? In a time where promises often fall short, can we still trust in a promise made thousands of years ago, a promise that has been confirmed, not once, but through the lives of these patriarchs? On May 14, 1948, something extraordinary happened, a moment that would echo through history and stir the hearts of believers around the world. After centuries of exile, displacement, and longing, the nation of Israel was re-established, its flag rising over the land promised to Abraham and his descendants so long ago. This wasn't just a political event, for many, it was the fulfillment of ancient prophecies, a clear and unmistakable sign that the words of the Bible were coming to life before our very eyes. For generations, the prophets had spoken of a time when the people of Israel would return to their homeland, a place they had been scattered from for nearly two millennia. These prophecies, recorded in the scriptures, weren't mere predictions, they were divine declarations, pointing to a future where God's promise would be fulfilled. And then, in 1948, against all odds, it happened. The world watched as Israel was reborn, and for many, this event signaled more than just the creation of a new nation. It was seen as a crucial milestone in God's prophetic timeline, a clear indication that the end times, as foretold in the Bible, were drawing near. But what does this mean for us today? Is the re-establishment of Israel a mere coincidence, or is it a tangible sign that we are living in the days spoken of by the prophets? How does this event connect to the larger picture of God's plan for the world, and what does it reveal about the times we are in? As we contemplate these questions, we might find ourselves looking at the world with new eyes, eyes that see the fulfillment of prophecies not as distant possibilities, but as realities unfolding in our midst. If the rebirth of Israel was prophesied and fulfilled, what other events might be on the horizon? And how are we called to respond as we witness the unfolding of God's plan? The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians is not just a modern struggle, it is deeply rooted in ancient history, with origins that trace back to a promise made by God to Abraham. This promise, of a land that would belong to Abraham's descendants, has been at the heart of a complex and often tragic narrative, one that has shaped the Middle East for centuries. When the State of Israel was re-established in 1948, it was a moment of fulfillment for many, the realization of a divine covenant. But for others, it marked the beginning of a new era of conflict, 
as the creation of Israel ignited territorial disputes that continue to this day. At the core of this ongoing struggle is the question of who rightfully owns the land, a question that has been the cause of wars, peace talks, and countless lives lost. For the Jewish people, Israel is the land promised to them by God, a sacred inheritance passed down through generations. It is not just a homeland, it is a fulfillment of prophecy, a physical manifestation of their enduring connection to their ancestors and their faith. For the Palestinians, however, the establishment of Israel meant displacement and loss, as they saw their homes and lands taken over. This has led to a long and bitter conflict, where both sides claim the same land, each with deep historical and spiritual ties. But why has this land, this small strip of earth, become such a flashpoint for conflict? Is it simply a matter of borders and territory, or is there something deeper at play? The roots of this conflict are intertwined with the very essence of identity, faith, and the promises made long ago. As we explore the history and the ongoing struggle, we must ask ourselves, is there a resolution to a conflict so deeply embedded in history and belief? How do we make sense of a war that seems to be about more than just land, but about the fulfillment of divine promises? And what role does this conflict play in the larger picture of prophecy and the times we are living in? In a world where peace often seems elusive, how do we reconcile these ancient promises with the realities of the present? And what hope is there for a future where these two peoples might find common ground, or will the land continue to be a place of conflict until the very end? Israel, a land small in size but vast in significance, stands at the very heart of biblical prophecy. Throughout the scriptures, Israel is portrayed not merely as a nation but as the epicenter of God's plan for humanity, a place where history, faith, and prophecy converge in a powerful way. According to biblical prophecy, Israel is destined to play a crucial role in the events leading up to the end times. It is here, in this ancient land, that the most significant events in the world's future are foretold to unfold. The prophecies speak of a time when Israel will face immense challenges, including the rise of a global government led by the Antichrist, a figure who will seek to destroy Israel and defy God's plan. But the scriptures also make it clear that these attempts will ultimately fail. Despite the forces that will rise against it, Israel will endure. The prophecies assure us that Israel's survival is not just a matter of national resilience, it is a fulfillment of God's unbreakable promise. Israel's continued existence is a testament to divine protection, a sign that no matter how dark the days may become, God's plan will prevail. And then, there is the greatest prophecy of all, the return of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that he will return not to any other place, but to Israel, specifically to Jerusalem, the city that has been at the center of so much history, conflict, and faith. This return will mark the culmination of all prophecies, the final act in a divine drama that has been unfolding for millennia. So, why is Israel so important in biblical prophecy? Is it just because of its history, or is there a deeper, spiritual significance to its role? As we reflect on these questions, we are reminded that Israel is more than just a country, it is a symbol, a promise, and a prophecy all in one. In a world where the future often seems uncertain, the prophecies about Israel offer us a glimpse of what is to come. They remind us that, no matter what challenges lie ahead, the outcome is already written. And in that story, Israel is not just a player, it is the stage upon which the final chapters of history will be played out. As we conclude, let us turn our hearts and minds toward a prayer, a plea for peace and hope amidst the turbulence of our times. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of concern and hope. We lift up the land of Israel, a land you have chosen and blessed, and we ask for your divine protection over it. In the midst of conflict and strife, grant strength and courage to those who call it home. May your peace reign over the land, soothing the hearts of those who suffer and bringing a resolution that only you can provide. We also earnestly pray for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The world longs for the day when he will come to establish his eternal kingdom, a kingdom of justice, peace, and righteousness. Lord, let his return be swift, 
and let the promises of your word come to fruition. May his coming bring a final end to suffering and conflict, and usher in a new era where your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. We trust in your sovereign plan and hold on to the hope that, even in the midst of uncertainty, your promises remain true. Strengthen our faith as we await the day when Jesus will return to set all things right. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. Thank you.